So here on my 54th birthday in lockdown and sitting in my favourite retreat, my garden shed, I am reflecting on whether I want next year's birthday, which will be 55, to be a life that begins to be different from the one that I've had up till now. And that doesn't mean I'm not looking forward to going back to the way things were but actually looking at the world around me and the world outside of this shed, I do wonder if going back to the way we were is even an option. And I've noticed, because I also work in business, that on places like LinkedIn, the very same people who are offering 10 ways to do this and 10 ways to do that all over the place almost every day and um, let me fill in the gaps 10 ways to uh, get better contacts 10 ways to improve sales 10 ways to win 10 ways to be more resilient 10 ways to be calmer in a noisy world some of these things were really commercial and some of them were pretending not to be commercial but were but in all cases it was this thing called smart thinking and I would also say in all cases, they were people essentially shouting at me things that I might want to do with my life, even though I hadn't really asked for any of that advice. And of course, you might assume that if I start to read it, then their guess was right. I was asking for that advice. I just didn't know until I saw that stuff. But literally, even now, day after day, that stuff is still out there. How to do this, how to do that better ways of doing this, how to survive this, how to get through this. And no matter how well intentioned that stuff is, what I'm noticing now is the very people, I really mean it, who were saying 10 ways to win, 10 ways to win the game, are now saying 10 ways to get through coronavirus, 10 ways to uh, think differently about the world around you. Uh, and I have a feeling that no matter where that world would go, is those entrepreneurs who are sent essentially either trying to do good or trying to grow their businesses and their income, uh, and possibly both, um, they're simply carrying on with the way things were. And we're all in lockdown, and most of us are online, and that stuff is there even perhaps more present in our lives. Now my question, and it's a question for me and my own behaviour too, is whether we need to go into a mode of inquiry now, of asking, that we should be a bit hesitant to keep telling people stuff and get those posts out online in order to get those likes and those connections. That actually if that world of almost forced networking brought us to a place where lockdown uh, now feels a bit like a prison, I'm already hearing from some of my colleagues that they are finding that being online more um, isn't necessarily a benefit, that though it connects them to the outside world, and that clearly is a benefit, that they're all zoomed out, that they're all conferenced out, that they're having more and more meetings and seem to be talking to even more people. Um, but particularly as they go onto their various social networks, people are putting out stuff that is often well-intentioned, but also can sometimes feel like being vomited all over. So my question is, as we look perhaps till coming out of lockdown, and I look towards my 55th birthday, is it in time, a time now to open inquiry, that it's important to shut up, at least for a while, to stop offering people smart stuff that comes into your head uh, and then putting it out without asking enough questions of your own? We have a world where everybody's offering solutions and a lot of those solutions can be cooked up and that you're putting out all your posts from the past because we're in lockdown and you're just reposting them and more and more content that's offering answers to questions that haven't really been asked. Then we don't have that space for silence. We don't have that space for not knowing. What if it's okay now not to know? What if we actually don't need to listen to all the advice that's being offered to us? That's a dangerous thing to say at the moment because there's advice coming from government and there's advice coming from government that is advice coming from scientists to government that I encourage you to continue to use your sense of being a citizen, a member of your neighbourhood, um, using your common sense about staying in. 
but that's different to 50 ways to do this, 10 ways to do that, 100 ways to do that, um, how to reignite this, how to uh, solve that problem, how to um, clear what is not clear. We're going into a place of increasing uncertainty, but we're not seeing that as a resource. Are we really afraid of the silence? The irony that I'm putting this video out on my birthday that just adds to that noise is not lost on me. But as I am connecting on this day with a lot of happy birthdays from my friends, posts which I'm liking and thanking people and genuinely feeling in lockdown that those people are reaching out to me, I also wonder if together, not knowing, being clumsy, learning to be at ease with the silence and collectively inquiring forward now into what that world might look like, how it could be different, how it could be better. And please, 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 what would happen if you didn't rush to answer that question right in my face on my birthday? A lot of people running their own businesses are worried because their income has dropped, particularly I would say if they're in the help businesses too. They're worried that there isn't going to be a high street for them to come back to. They're worried that their client base isn't going to return and that they have bills to pay and that it could be unsustainable. That we could have a world where there's a lot more social unrest, a lot more unemployed people. And all of those things now suggest there's a dark hole up ahead rather than a tunnel of light that we don't know what it's going to look like. But even if we start to say, well, let's shape that together, we don't know how we're going to shape it together. It's scary times ahead. But that's important. It's an important moment. That, that process of discovery does not need too much noise and people shouting in your ears, well, what about this? And I've got 10 ways to do that. And here's the technique. And here's the new model. And here's the new methodology. Because if you do that, there is no silence. There is no space for discovery. This is difficult time, but the danger of filling it with zoom, zoom, zoom and too much noise is that those moments of silent discovery are simply drowned out.